invited to the White House for dinner, your invitation would come from one of these three men. What is your name, please? My name is Sanford L. Fox. My name is Sanford L. Fox. My name is Sanford L. Fox. Only one of these men is the real Sanford L. Fox. The other two are imposters, and we'll try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Phyllis Newman, Orson Bean, and Kitty Carlisle. On to Tell the Truth with your host, Bob Collier. Thank you very much. Thank you, and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth. Brought to you this week by Anison, the headache tablet to relieve pain and so relax tension, calm nerves. Anison. Good evening, panel. Good evening, Hi, Bob. Hey, Phyllis, welcome to the night show again. Thank you. It's fun to be here. It's been too long since you were here with us in the nighttime show. Thank you. Panel, open your envelope and follow along as I read, if you will, please. I, Sanford L. Fox, am head of the Social Entertainment Office at the White House in Washington, D.C. As such, I am responsible for the invitations, programs, and seating arrangements of every major social function held in the Chief Executive's mansion. In my files are exhaustive records of every White House luncheon and dinner since 1901. In recent years, the President of the United States and his First Lady have become the number one host and hostess of the world. In just the last six months, my office has issued White House invitations to over 12,000 guests. Signed, Sanford L. Fox. <laughs> Panel, these three gentlemen all claim to be Sanford L. Fox, as you heard, who is the head of the Social Entertainment Office for the White House. And let's start this first round of questioning, if we may, with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Thank you, bud. Uh, number one, uh, the name of the invited, is it printed or written in? <coughs> it is written in, lettered in, rather. Uh, by hand? That's right. Uh, number two, is it ever printed on the invitation? It is hand lettered. It yes. is. Uh, number three, when you get an invitation to dinner, what does the envelope include? The envelope includes a uh, card telling whether or not the formal affair, black tie, etc. And that's it. And no, uh, number one, is there another little card in there? I have, I've had the pleasure and the privilege of being invited. And I yes, it also tells whether the affair is with black or white tie. <coughs> tells you what entrance to go to and so forth. Thank you. Tom Poston. Thank you, bud. Uh, number two, how come I have never been invited down here? <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> right, bud? Right. I, I couldn't answer that, sir. Oh, <laughs> you don't, you're not really giving the I'm invitations. Not responsible you're... for the guests. <laughs> I see. Uh, number three, what did Milton Berle say when he saw President Johnson there the last time he was down? Do you remember? I cannot recall exactly what he said. No, I don't. Uh, thank you. Number one, are, are all the dinners formal? Not all of them, no. Some are not even... Uh, it, the smaller dinner. type ones. Smaller type ones are often very informal. Thank you. Number two, are the dogs welcome? Yes, sir. They are? I don't I'm mean sorry, my I dog, I mean I his catch, dog. Excuse me, I didn't catch the question. Uh, are the dogs welcome? Well, are the dogs? The president's dog. Uh, not the I don't dinner, mean the, the guests who are dogs, I mean the real dogs <laughs> that live there. <laughs> 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 Phyllis Nilman. Oh, thank you, bud. Uh, number two, the chief of protocol. Uh, Ambassador Andrew Biddle Duke. Thank you. Uh, number three, uh, Helen Hayes did something recently at the White House. What did she do? She read uh, from a, one of her plays. Number one, what did Helen Hayes do recently? Uh, Helen Hayes did uh, 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 selections from the recent show, which closed on Broadway. Thank you. Number two, who were the two masters of ceremonies at the president's big function, the one that was held here in Madison Square Garden and the one in Washington? Number two? One was... Um, uh, number three, do you remember? Number three, do you remember? Oh, I cannot recall. Number one, do you May remember? I hear the question again? I... There were two masters of... Uh, and there's I a bell. Knew that. <laughs> <laughs> and you knew that I knew. Uh -huh. Orson B. <laughs> and I don't care, so you'll never know. Uh, <laughs> isn't she lovely? I taught her everything. Uh, 
Uh, number one, uh, if, for instance, uh, speaking now as a matter of protocol, if, say, the ambassador oh. from Ghana were to be invited to dinner and the ambassador from Uruguay at the same time, how would you decide who sat next to Mrs. Johnson, say? Well, uh, for diplomatic reasons, they wouldn't be asked to the same formal affair because you couldn't honor two people at the same time so that another affair would be scheduled for one person Can or the other. Never be two ambassadors from two different countries at the same time? Well, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, well, yes, they would be seated. Uh, Alphabetical but, order, no doubt. That's right. All right. That's <laughs> 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 hey, all the time we have. Time for you now to mark your own particular invitations or ballots, as we call them. Vote them immediately for the one you think is the real one without consultation, of course. And no change once you've marked them. Simply vote now for number one, number two, or number three. Our team of challengers will receive $250 for every incorrect vote. All ballots marked? They are. All right, Tom, for whom did you vote? Oh, I had a struggle through that one. I didn't care too much for his last answer, but I thought in all in all, he, he gave the best answers. Ooh. Nobody, number one. Oh, they all saw it. <laughs> Number one gave a great answer. It was Helen Hayes' things from her play, The White House. Uh, number two may be a dark horse, though. However, I voted for number one. All right, Orson? Well, I'm probably wrong because Phyllis is so smart. But, That's uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I voted for number two uh, because of... Uh, gee, I had a swell reason. <laughs> and go to her and then come back oh, to me. All right, <laughs> Jenny. <laughs> I voted for number two. I think uh, that uh, ambassadors would be very surprised if they were uh, seated alphabetically. I think it's uh, because of seniority that they get preference. And also, I think that the last uh, um, affair for, by, for Prime Minister Eshko, the invitations were printed. The, the names were printed on the invitation. So I voted for number two. All right. Orson, have you thought of your reason yet? I did, and it was uh, pretty lousy. <laughs> So there we have it with the votes all established and the minds made up and, of course, all reasons given. We'll find out now which of these three gentlemen actually uh, heads up the social entertainment office of the White House in Washington, D.C. Will the real Stanford L. Fox please stand up? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> we thank you very much, sir. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? Well, my name is Jim Trollinger, and I'm Public Relations Director for the Statler Hilton Hotel in New York City. <laughs> <laughs> Who should have remembered? Tom. Why? I entertained him there with you the did? group of the show that he was giving. We two were in. How about a hotel? Isn't that awful? <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you again. <laughs> Close promptly. Now you know why you're not invited to the satellite. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, what is your real name and what do you do? My real name is Commander Harry Rumble, United States Navy, on the staff of the Commandant, 3rd Naval District. <laughs> Pleasure to have had you here with us tonight, and in checking your score, we find you did a good job of fooling. There were two incorrect votes, and that's always good with this panel. And that's twice $250, or $500 from Anison, as well as, of course, the gift package of all the fine products from the makers of Anison. Thank you very much for sharing your evening with us. Hope it was bright for you, too. Goodbye, and God bless you. <laughs> Our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Jeffrey Arnold. My name is Jeffrey Arnold. My name is Jeffrey Arnold. Please listen and follow along with this story, if you will, panel. I, Jeffrey Arnold, got on a subway train at 3.13 p.m. one day and rode continuously until the next afternoon at nine minutes past four. During that time, I had traveled every inch of the New York City subway system, 237 and three quarters miles. In completing the trip in 24 hours and 56 minutes, I broke the previous record and became the new marathon subway riding champion. 
Although I changed trains 66 times, I made the entire trip on one 15-cent fare. Signed, Jeffrey Arnold. These three young men all claim to be Jeffrey Arnold, marathon subway rider, I guess is the best name for him. We'll start this cross-examination, if we may, with a young lady who knows that subways are not for sleeping. Phyllis Newman. Phyllis. Thank you, bud. Uh, number two, what was your, what's the last stop in Manhattan? Uh, Houston Street. Number three, do you agree with that? I'm um, going in which direction? Going towards the water. <laughs> uh, Manhattan is an island, so there's water all around. Pick your water. <laughs> Oh, Forget feet. it. Let's go on. Number one, <laughs> who had the previous record? Uh, a man named Jerome Moses. Good. Number one, why did you want to do this? It was just a challenge. I wanted to break the record. Number two, why did you want to? Because somebody bet me $35 that I couldn't ride the whole subway system. Really? Number three, where did you find New Lots Avenue? That's out in Flatbush. Number two, is that where it is? Yeah. Orson B. Number one, did you find New Lodge Avenue out there, too? It was there when I got there. How was it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, number one, uh, how many bums did you count on the way? Or, I mean, late at night in the wee hours, you know, when they're less reputable. Well, I wasn't counting them, but there were a couple. There were a few there. Well, I'm glad to hear that. It's a subway I know and love. With the dim bulbs and the filthy windows. Did you get uh, on with it, please? No, uh, sorry. Uh, number two, how long did it take you to plot the trip? Or did, you must have made a chart, a yeah. plot. How long did that take to work out? Oh, about a month or so, a month and a half. Now, it must have meant, if you covered every inch, that you are able, at the end of every given line, to double back f free without paying another fare. Is that true? Well, not at every line. At certain points, they have these free... Like free, free transfer. But how could you have gone to the... Oh, please. All right. <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. Uh, number one, what did your mother say about all of this? <laughs> well, uh, at first she didn't want me to go, but I convinced her. Oh. Number two, uh, what did you eat in this 24 hours? Well, I brought three sandwiches along with me at the beginning. And number three, I, oh, I'm sorry. And, and what, then what happened? And then I stopped and bought Coke. Uh huh. Machine. Number three, were you, did you fall asleep at all during this time? Oh, uh, yes. I, and what I, happened then? Did you have well, to do the same thing twice? No, well, I, at one point, I asked the conductor to wake me up before the train came to the end of the line. Uh huh. Number two, well, you, did you sleep? Yes, I did. Tom Poston. Thank you. Number one, how long did it take you to plot your trip? Oh, it was over a period of six months. I was working out the details. And you took a month, number two, is that right? About a month and a half. How long did it take you to plot your trip, number three? Two weeks. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, number one, uh, how did you convince your mother? <laughs> well, I, I just kept asking. I, I, got, I just went once with some friends, and then I, after that I went alone. After the first time now, I saw it was now I'd like to find out, number two, what was the old record that you broke? I mean, after all, it's only a certain, uh, you travel them all, you've traveled them all, right? What was the record? Well, it was in time. The, this uh, Jerome Moses did it in about t over 25 hours. You, you did it in less time? And that's it. Time for you now to mark your subway tokens, if you will. Mark your balance at once. No change permitted once you have marked, of course, and no consultation. Vote for number one, or for number two, or number three. All ballots marked? No, not yet. No, not yet. All right, everybody but Tom. Tom? I don't know who to vote for. They're great. They are. Take a stab. I'll take a stab. And then tell us for whom you stab. I just stabbed number one there. <laughs> uh, it seems like a long time to work out that uh, plan, but uh, what the heck. He, he looked like a kind of a bright guy. I don't know. It's just a token vote anyway. Whoa. Oh. Phyllis Newman. Oh. I'm too sick to answer. No, <laughs> I voted for number one because he was a little vague and about his mother, and I think you have to be a little vague to sit so long in the subway. <laughs> <laughs> Orson Bean. Hey, he rode the subway because it was there. That's the same That's answer right. that mountain climbers give. I didn't vote... But I, I, I don't know. They're all marvelous. I didn't vote for number three because he said he did it alone. And it seems to me that if someone was going to cough up 35 bucks, he would have been along checking to see if he did it. 
I don't know. I voted for number two because he has a glint in his eye like an adventurer, like he would climb Annapurna if you could get 35 bucks for doing it. <laughs> Kitty Carla. I voted for number one uh, for the simple reason that I believe it should have taken six months to plot this kind of a tour. And so the others had it in much less time, so I voted for number one. Very well. That makes it very close to unanimity. There were three for number one, one for number two. Let's find out, shall we, which one of these young men actually is the one who rode all the subways all around New York and, of course, is now known as the champion marathon subway rider. Will the real Jeffrey Arnold please stand up? Jeffrey, I have just one thing to say to you. I understand you're entering Harvard University this fall. Is that right? Yes. Well, all I can say is I hope sincerely from the bottom of my heart that you apply the same industry to your classroom studies as you did to mapping out this plan of yours for riding the subway system, uh, which is a long-winded way of saying good luck to you, son. Uh, thank you. Best of everything. And try the MTA when you're there. You can get lost in that either. Number two, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is George Molnar and I work for IBM World Trade Corporation. Thank you. And number three, what is your real name? My name is do? Guy Von Wiegen and I sell candy at Casino Weiss Theater. And I... Well, in checking the score, gentlemen, we find that the panel was a little smart that time. There was only one incorrect vote, but that's worth $250. And that, of course, comes to you from Anderson, as does a gift package of all the fine products from the makers of Anderson. Thank you, gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed it. Goodbye and God bless you. <laughs> we'll be back with another team of challengers after this message of interest. And our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is... Stephen Octander. My name is Stephen Octander. My name is Stephen Octander. Follow along once more, if you will, panel, please. I, Stephen Octander, am an authority on perfume. My company supplies the basic essences to many of the great perfume houses both here and abroad. I travel all over the world in search of new scents and aromas. The musk seed from the West Indies oak moss from the Mediterranean, cognac oil from the Rhine, and citronella grass from Indonesia. As a perfumer, I can create a scent which will project a specific image, whether it be sophisticated, innocent, or mysterious. Next fall, I will be teaching the only college course in the world on perfume. Signed, Stefan Arkander. <laughs> Three gentlemen all claim to be Stefan Arctander, International Perfume Authority. May we start this round with Orson Bean. Orson? Yes, uh, Mr. Arctander, number one. Uh, how many musk seeds would it take to make a jar of perfume? I mean, how do you crush those little things down? What do you do with them? Musk. Well, you get about uh, 10 gram of 2,000 pounds. Oh, really? You have to take 2,000 pounds of musk seed? Concrete. Mercy. Uh, number three, uh, there, tell me about the citronella grass. Is that the same stuff you use to keep bugs away? Yes, that's correct. And then why, why does it suddenly smell good when you put it into perfume? Because you mix it with other perfume materials. Ah, interesting. Number two, evening and wine spar. That's a uh, perfume uh, not too well known. Do you know uh, which company makes it? No, no I don't. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, we can roll him out then. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Number three, uh, where does Attar of Roses come from? Bulgaria. Uh, number two, where does Ambergris come from? From the sperm whale. Uh, number one, can you tell me what happens in grass? Depends in on France. what kind of perfume we're wearing. <laughs> <laughs> Big your In grass. In, in, in... in that southern France, north of Cannes, you mean the little village? Yes. They're making all they ask. Thank you. Number two, can you tell me what flower has never been approximated in a in a perfume? 
What no. power smell? No. Number three, can you tell me what kind of a fixative uh, creates the longevity of perfume? Known as the Tom Poston fixative. <laughs> a, great Tom? <laughs> a great number of different fixatives are you. Thank you. Tom Poston. Thank you. Number two, what's the origin of your name, uh, Octander? I haven't the slightest idea. Got it from my father. <laughs> My father used to call me a lot of names, Octavio. <laughs> Number one, what's the origin of your name? Yeah, my I... origin is my grandfather's name. <laughs> okay. Is yours a United States company, number three? Yes. In other words, what is the largest manufacturer? Bill and Newman. Thank you, but number three, what is your company? It's International Flavors and Fragrances. And uh, uh, number two, what are some of the brand names it makes? We don't sell any brand names. We supply essences to firms. I see. All right, thank you. Number one, who makes Lanter D? I don't want to say that. Why? Because I don't want to plug anybody. Oh, number three, do you want to plug anybody? Uh, for ethical reasons, we wouldn't like to tell. I see. Why ethical? I don't understand. Not a shame, maybe. I mean, it's, a, it's a something that's sold, you know, over the counter. Mm -hmm. Number two, would you... Uh, oh, such hostility. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it blows I ranks <laughs> against you there. Well, close your own ranks right now, if you will, please, and mark your ballots. Mark them at once, of course, without change, and no consultation permitted as you vote now for number one, number two, or number three. Uh, oh, six. Oh, Ballots are now marked. So, Tom, for whom did you vote this time? I voted for number two. I uh, thought he was just surly and uncommunicative enough yeah. to have been a guy who was responsible for making <laughs> women smell like that. So I voted. <laughs> oh, no, I liked him. I liked him a lot. Phyllis. Yes, and I, I voted for number three for the same reasons. He was so testy and hostile. <laughs> <laughs> then I figured, oh, I'd better vote for him. He may hit me or something. <laughs> Throw a bottle of perfume oh, at you. I'm so nervous. I don't want to plug anybody, man. Right. We're in for it over here. <laughs> you spend a whole day with musk seed and crabgrass, you feel lousy, too. <laughs> I, voted for, uh, I voted for number one. Uh, number two uh, didn't know about evening in wine spa or didn't want to tell for ethical reasons, and uh, <laughs> I uh, voted for number one because he looks like he spent a day in uh, wine spa. <laughs> <Wine spot. laughs> Kitty. I voted for number three because I think that Adder of Roses comes from Bulgaria, and I think that's rather an obscure bit of information. <laughs> well, this is the most widely split vote so far tonight. There are two ah. for number three, one for number one, one for number two. Let's find out as we go now to learn which of these gentlemen is the real international perfume authority. Will the real Stefan Arctander please stand up? Well, the three ladies knew the perfume essences, and that's quite rightly the way it should be. May I ask you something, uh, Orson? Yes. Uh, this, what uh, am I wearing? Well, it's no, called no, Evening in Wine Spa. Is yes. this company owned by Nate Wine Spa or Irving Wine Spa? <laughs> it's a subsidiary of Irving Wine Spa Irving. Associates. It's, yes. uh, it's He's a, the doer uh, in, the, in the family, isn't he? He is. It's, yes. a, it's a mysterious perfume for innocent girls. It, it produces a... Uh, <laughs> it's a mysterious family. <laughs> All right. Let's see, number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is George Gass. I'm a painter in sculpture. Thank you, sir, very much. And number two, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Reginald Helfrey, and I'm director for World Service of the United Church of Christ. <laughs> And checking the score, we find there were two incorrect votes. And that's two times $250 or $500 for Madison, gentlemen, for you to divide. We hope it brings you great pleasure as we hope the evening brought you pleasure. It comes to you from Anison as does a gift package of all of Anison's fine products. Thank you for being with us. Good night and God bless you. <laughs> for the night panel, but my sincere thanks to you. I personally wish you'd go a lot longer. You always make me feel like that. See you all next week. Please be sure to join us again. I'll see you tomorrow afternoon on the daytime show. And of course, may I speak for Addison now in reminding you once again, 
to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> to tell the truth is a Mark Goodman, Bill Thompson production. <laughs> been brought to you by Anison, a headache tablet to relieve pain. So relax tension, calm nerves. Anison, this is Johnny Olsen speaking for To Tell the Truth, program with...